In the tech business world, learning that you're a unicorn is music to the ears. And that's because it's a term used to describe a startup company that's gained a value of more than $1 billion. As you'll see, unicorns aren't as rare as you might think. Neither are decacorns, tech companies worth $10 billion. There's even now a hectacorn, a $100 billion startup. And right up there, striving for tech greatness, are plenty of Aussie entrepreneurs, full of wonderful ideas and money-making skills. They're so clever, in fact, our most important challenge is how to keep them in Australia and not lose them to the world. Bright light city, gonna set my soul, gonna set my soul on fire. In the bright light city of Las Vegas, it's showtime. Viva Las Vegas! And as the crowd gathers out front, backstage, tonight's star performers are feeling a little apprehensive. I bet you didn't think when you were thinking your career through that Elvis would make an appearance. No. Not really, no. It was never in the, uh, in the plane. It's the final night of a week-long love-in with customers of Australia's most laid-back billionaires. Do you want two more Elvises? Mike Cannon-Brooks and Scott Farquhar. Giro Las Vegas. Giro. Try not to take ourselves too no. seriously. As you've seen with us dressed up in Elvis costumes. I was heading there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you spent 82% in one-on-one -on -one meetings. You As founders of tech company Atlassian, Mike and Scott, both 39, are part of a new breed of entrepreneurs. And it seems fun is part of their secret to success. I think you both said you, you were aiming for a business where you didn't have to wear a suit. We still don't have to wear a suit, <laughs> suit to work, so... Uh, it it's, made me wear one yet. It's great, yeah. <laughs> Together, they are Australia's first tech billionaires, having created a company worth an eye-watering 50 billion. Their software products are used by some of the world's biggest institutions and companies, including the US Defense Department, Facebook, and Twitter, and about 130 odd thousand others. NASA can't put stuff into space without going through our stuff. Tesla doesn't put a car on the road. You know, you can't go watch a Disney movie. Like, it, it's amazing to think how many products we've played some small part in almost any industry. That's, that's pretty incredible, right? When you go to people and they say, my business runs on your stuff. Don't F it up. <laughs> <laughs> but literally every day we run on your software. Do you have to be able to predict the future a little? In technology, yeah. I mean, you have to be thinking about what does the world look like in five years and building for that today. You're not predicting it, you're literally building it. If you're just trying to guess where it's going, you're in trouble. Yeah. You know where we're going. We know what we're trying to build to get us there. For these Sydney lads, it's been an extraordinary ride. It's pretty, it's pretty weird. We have a very weird life. Like, every month, it seems like we're creating great things, amazing things are happening, meeting amazing people. It all started 17 years ago at university, when Mike sent Scott an email inviting him to co found a startup tech business. It is true that you lived off credit cards for a while. I think I lived off his credit card for a while. <laughs> yeah, we started on, uh, we were on nothing for a little while, then 300 bucks a week. Yep, 300 bucks a week. We were very cheap taste, right? <laughs> Still, relatively cheap taste. <laughs> yeah, and, and I guess that's very grounding, all of that. When we were small, you know, our office didn't have any heat and we would code through the middle of the night. You taught me this actually. You said it was get so cold and you can't type anymore. Go to the faucet, you know, the tap and turn on the hot water and, you know, warm your hands up in the hot water and you can come back and code again, which is, which is great. This is not advice we think other entrepreneurs <laughs> should follow, by the way. This is not a healthy way to be uh, uh, behaving. For the most part, the story of Atlassian evolved behind closed doors at their Sydney headquarters but that all changed in December 2015. A massive payday for the Sydney founders of software provider Atlassian. When Atlassian was listed on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange in New York. The former classmates are now among Australia's richest men and their company has a market value of $8 billion. The growth of Atlassian has been phenomenal. 
Its offices can be found around the world, providing jobs for 3,500 employees. And the relationship Mike and Scott formed back in uni has only strengthened. They even live next door to each other in two of Australia's most expensive homes. We actually have a hole in the fence so the kids can run back. Is there really a yeah. hole in the fence? So yeah, we cut it. It's about six foot wide. It's like got a dirt track. Goes back and forth. But it's their astronomical wealth rather than their achievements that tends to attract the most attention. I do find it funny in Australia that, you know, the number of zeros in a bank account gives you authority to, you know, to talk about something, but the number of jobs you've created or the number of, you know, export dollars you brought to Australia, like none of those things, uh, you know, get reported upon, which is a little frustrating. I guess it's because we still see money as success. It's not a very good scorecard for success. It's a burden. It's a... It's a, it's a... It's a burden? It's a sense of responsibility that one should do something very impactful with that. Both have a sense of duty which has helped them find their political voice. And their priority is to nudge our politicians into recognising the need for Australia to have its own thriving tech industry. I think it's a huge challenge for them to understand uh, what's going on, right? So we, it's interesting, whenever we go down to Canberra, uh, we try to have learned to put our business into terms that they understand, right? I was having a long chat with a politician, remain nameless, that we are a manufacturing exporter and that just blew his mind. I'm like, I'm a manufacturer. I, make, I don't have a factory, right, but I'm a manufacturer. I make goods and 95% of what I make, I export to the rest of the world. Australia's good at exporting stuff from sheep to resources. So I have natural DNA of this business is Australian no, you're not really an exporter. I'm like, why not? I'm an exporter. I export things. So we're trying to put things in terms that they understand. Their goal is simple enough, to make Australia as tech-friendly as the United States, to create our own Silicon Valley. It was still a long way to go before we're, you know, kind of world-class. If you look at Silicon Valley, it's kind of the epicentre uh, of uh, technology, like there's, you know, no one's going to supersede that really soon. But I think Australia's in a really good spot. Isn't that what we're aiming to do, though, to stop our brain drain, if you like, going to Silicon Valley? I think it's what we have to do. It's not what we're aiming to do, right? Technology is the largest industry in the world and growing faster compared to the second industry than the largest industry almost ever has. And so if Australia doesn't have a significant technology industry, from a, an economy-wide perspective, we're going to be in some trouble. Still to come, at 32, Melanie has four billion reasons to smile. So we have over 15 million people using it every month. The young gurus with great ideas. Could you have done this in Australia? I don't think so. But will Australia back them? We're losing <laughs> your brain and your potential money making. That's next on 60 Minutes. The world of technology has seen the creation of a new genre of entrepreneur. And Melanie Perkins from Perth is one of them. At just 32, she has already achieved what's called unicorn status. Did you know what a unicorn was before you got into this world? I didn't know what a unicorn was, or a venture capitalist, or a startup, or actually any of those things until we learnt about it <laughs> through our journey. I guess this whole thing was just a little bit of a pipe dream. Um, so to her delight, Melanie has now discovered a unicorn is the tech description for a billion dollar business. Her company Canva is worth almost four billion, a remarkable result from such humble beginnings. This was me and Cliff back in my mum's living room. My mum's here today. Melanie knew there had to be an easier way to create professional and quality graphic designs online, no matter your level of experience. So, um, who uses this? So, we have over 15 million people using it every month, and that is, there's 50,000 schools using it across the globe, 80% of Fortune 500 companies. Oh, gosh, they were just waiting for you to come up with something, <laughs> weren't they? I think it, was a, it solved a pretty big pain point for a lot of people. Even when she was a little girl, Melanie had an entrepreneurial spirit. At 22, she and her boyfriend, Cliff Obrett, 
developed an online platform to design school yearbooks. But as an Australian trying to make it in the tech world, her big break only came when she got the nod of approval from Silicon Valley. After a rather awkward meeting with American venture capitalist Bill Tai. I studied some psychology at uni and had learnt that if you mirror someone's body language, they're more likely to like you. But he had his arm behind his chair, so I was sitting there trying to have my arm behind my chair, flip through my pages of the future of publishing, eat my lunch and kind of act normal. How did that go? Well, it didn't appear to be going that well, but fortunately you know, he introduced us to, well, me to a lot of his network, which was really helpful. Which means he did believe you. Apparently so. I found out after the meeting, <laughs> which was awesome. California's Silicon Valley has long been the centre of the universe for those seeking to make it in the tech world. It's where many Australians with a dream and a desire flock. Young people with grand ideas mix with investors. <laughs> And it all happens in what appears to be a very cosy environment. 26-year-old Zach Altman moved here to San Francisco from his home in Sydney six years ago. This was the place he believed he could realise his dreams. There's always been this, this sentiment of you can come here from nothing and create something huge. And so people come here with big ideas and come here with with kind of, you know, the sky's the limit attitude. Zach's big idea was Lounge Buddy, an app and website for travellers to book access to airport lounges around the world. It sh tells you all the lounges. Yeah, and then we also have your flight details so you know how long you're going to have available in the lounge. Where to find it? Exactly. Earlier this year, the startup was snapped up by American Express in a deal that remains under wraps. But clearly, it was a good payday for Zach. For me, the acquisition hasn't hit me properly yet. Um, it's still very new in my mind. And did you have a little moment of, phew, at last? <laughs> that moment for me was, was when I booked my vacation the day after, after we closed. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to Bali. Zach believes his entrepreneurial ambitions were best served in the tech ecosystem that is Silicon Valley. But in coming here, Australia lost out. Could you have done this in Australia? Uh, I don't think so. For me, it's, like a, it's a crazy thing that you have Australians who have great ideas and you could build it in Australia. But in order to be successful, the advice is go to the US. And so you have Australians going to the US raising American money, building an American company, and paying American taxes. But could we have come up with a way of keeping you from leaving? <laughs> yeah. Would that, would that have been, and, and is that still possible? I think that's still possible. It will be Australia's version of Silicon Valley. A dedicated tech park is now finally being planned for Sydney. Uh, I think today we sent a really strong signal to the world and it should create the environment for local tech startups to flourish. Let's do something simple as an invitation. We've got 50,000 templates you can choose from. 50,000? Yeah. <laughs> Melanie Perkins has already made her mark, and her tech company Canva has now established its headquarters in Sydney. Is this a young person's game? Um, I think that it's in any person's game. Anyone that... Have I missed the boat? Absolutely not. <laughs> Is there a problem that you feel passionate about that you want to see solved? Is that how it works? I think so. It starts there. I think that's the most important thing because once you've found a problem that you want to solve passionately, there's going to be so many barriers. Every single barrier you can possibly imagine. Um, but I think that once you've got a really crystal clear picture of the problem that you want to solve, it, that's sort of step one. Oh, look at these guys with that. In Vegas, at the Atlassian Summit for their customers, Mike Cannon-Brooks and Scott Farquhar still marvel at their achievements. Yes, money's falling from the fax machine. This is fantastic. <laughs> Funny that we had a fax machine back it, then, it is, by the way. Um, Haven't got a lot of faxes recently. Without doubt, the Atlassian success story is an inspiration for other young Australian tech entrepreneurs. Has it changed you both? No, Mike still wears the same white t-shirts that he 
that he always has. So Less choices in the morning. Less choices in the morning. <laughs> yeah. The benchmark they've set is pretty high, but Mike and Scott are adamant those with a dream can be just as successful. I imagine within Australia right now, there are any number of young people with these great ideas. Where do they start? Yesterday. Yeah. I mean, far too many people who tell me, oh, I've got great ideas. What are you doing about them? Well, I think maybe next year. No, yesterday. Like, ch chase those great ideas. The, the, the worst case outcome, I would say, for most of those people is they will learn a lot about themselves and they will learn a lot about, you know, growing a business. And they can do it here. They can do it here, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.